freshmen from nursing students? Is that what we meant? Yeah, y'all are so excited and so young because it's just good. I like it. I, like it. I can't even remember when I was rich. I mean, it's on my driver's license, but that's the only thing I have. So, you know, I can't even remember when I was rich. Uh, yeah. We're going how do I turn the lights down a little bit? Just making sure that they don't want to be Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's a easy button. Okay. All right, everybody got two pieces of paper, right? There you go. Isn't, yes. that, isn't that nice? Good body, everything. I mean, what more can you ask for from a student? I mean, you, you just got it all. Beautiful um, people. We do have a stalker that follows me a lot more. <laughs> Yeah, so I got toilet paper and indoor in medicine, so I don't know. I did not see you check out. I, just, I checked you out going in, but I didn't check you out. <laughs> So 
it's an infection for life, just like HIV is an infection for life. So, what are your risks of acquiring these viruses on the job? Uh, you can be infected by a splash to the mucous membranes of your face. That's your eyes, nose, mouth. Uh, you can be infected by a splash to broken skin, uh, cut on your hand, or just had your ears pierced, whatever. You can be infected that way. Your biggest risk of being infected is if you're stuck or injured with a sharp device that's been in a patient, like a needle, and the patient has one of those viruses, that's your biggest risk. That's your biggest risk of being infected. And that's, we don't want any of those things to happen, but we certainly don't want the sharp injury to happen. So, uh, what, what would you guess is your risk of acquiring, uh, say, HIV on the job from a needle stick like that? Somebody not on the front row. 50%, 20%, 100 percent Y'all are so shy. You don't have to get over that, or you'll just get run over. <laughs> you don't want to be run over. <laughs> so, actually, the risk of transmitting HIV in a healthcare setting is relatively low. Three out of a thousand healthcare workers are infected when they have that dirty injury, the dirty sharp injury. Now, for them, it's 100%. Okay? For HIV, for hepatitis C, it's 2%. For hepatitis B, it's really, really high. And that's why it's good that all of you have had your hep B vaccination, hopefully, or, you, or you're not here, right? And if you had a post-vaccination antibody test and that was positive, you would be considered immune for life to hepatitis B. So it's a very good vaccine. So, now, don't go out of here thinking that HIV is hard to acquire in other settings. <laughs> okay, for all you IV drug abusers that got through the screening, <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> That's your number one thing. 
The other way you can acquire the flu is touch it, touching a surface that that, that that person the flu has touched or that they coughed on, and then rubbing your face. If you just touch it, that's okay. But it's, I have a bad habit of rubbing my eyes, and so, you know, the, I get sick. So, you know, realize that if you touch surfaces and then go to your face, that's a route of transmission. If you just get it on your hands and then wash your hands, it's okay. So, I'll do that very carefully. Uh, if, since you're going to be a student at Baptist Health, unless you have a medical indication, a contraindication, or a religious uh, uh, contraindication to vaccination, you will be vaccinated for the flu this winter. Okay? Pretty much all the large hospitals in Little Rock, if you want to work there, if you want to be a student there, then vaccination is required. It's a condition of being there because it makes good sense. Now, our, I don't, yeah, I'll skip. Anybody want to know about pandemics? Yes, no? Who, who votes yes? Raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> now, all of your, all of your instructors don't be this way. They're going to ask you if you want to pay you want to know how to get meds, if you say no, they'll just pass on by. Okay? So you can shorten your lectures just by that one simple act. <laughs> you can share that with Sue when she comes back in the room. <laughs> oh, you're back? Oh! <laughs> okay, so typically, all of y'all probably know this, in some level of your brain, okay? Uh, our flu season typically runs like December or after Thanksgiving to early March. And typically we say it runs from the Thanksgiving holiday to spring break. And that's pretty much true because people mix around, stir around Thanksgiving and people pick up a little bit of flu and then they go see grandma and everybody gets the flu. And then January and February are horrible and then we get over it by spring break. So last year was different. It was moved more February, April, and it was a very mild flu season. But that's typically our flu season versus month of the year. All right, so flu spread by large droplets. And then you had airborne TB. And the blood-borne pathogens by splashing mucous membranes of your face, uh, skin, Dirty sharks and all those other ways that we don't do. So, pathogenic bacteria. Uh, a lot of people come to our hospital with infections with, with bacteria. All of you have probably had a staph infection in your life. If you had any little cut that got infected, anything like that, it's probably staph. Uh, so, it's very, very common. It's our most common infection we see when people are admitted to the hospital with an infection. It's usually staph organs. Um, you may have also had strep throat. Everybody, pretty much everybody has. We rarely have a patient admitted with that. Uh, that's pretty much an ER outpatient thing as far as strep throat. So you won't see that in the hospital, but you will see staph orders. Those are spread by contact, by touch. You touch something that's contaminated with the bacteria, or you touch the patient in the site that is infected, then you, and you touch yourself, rub your eyes, uh, rub your skin. Some bacteria, and even staph, can you know, really penetrate the skin. So that's an example of the infection spread by touch. And we have versions of the staph aureus and these other bacteria that are very antibiotic resistant and are very hard to treat. And as you go through your healthcare career, you'll learn all these acronyms for resistant bacteria, MRSA, DRE, things like that. And if that's not enough, we have to worry about bioterrorism. You know? Uh, bioterrorism is an attack with an infectious agent. Uh, most common um, plague, anthrax, smallpox could be agents of bioterrorism. Uh, and for the first 20, 12 to 24 hours, they all look like the flu. They all present with that same flu-like symptom, and then it rapidly changes. So, uh, 
when I was in school, and okay, this is where you get an A if you get this right or wrong. You have to guess. What decade did I finish college? 60s. 70s. Or that 60s? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> the 70s. You're close. Early. I remember child frames about the music I listened to, you know. <laughs> How many have ever seen the Mate Track? Yeah. Okay. Cool. We used to ride around in a 442 and listen to the Mate Track. Like <laughs> those guys who started not lying, but they didn't go back to the When I was in school, we studied. Uh, these diseases, because they were interesting from a historical perspective. You know, plague changed the course of history in the Middle Ages in Europe. How many people knew that? Some of you did. Smallpox, same thing. I mean, these are, in the, in the history of our, where we are now, it's because of some of these infectious types. So we studied it for that reason. But now, I have a standing order to prophylax you for the plague, it's not by a physician. And we have antibiotics so that we can start giving it to you in two hours. So it's no longer, and our laboratory takes proficiency studies three, four times a year to make sure we can identify these things. So it's no longer a historical oddity. You know, it, it's a part of our reality. The good news, you might say, well, bad news, I'm in a hospital. The good news is that you're in a hospital. Because hospitals are the first priority for all resources in case something like this happens. So you're in the right place. All right, that's not enough have to worry about emerging infectious diseases. You know, all the things that come out of camels and little strange animals that crawl around in the forest. That happens, you know. Uh, so we have to worry about those. I use this photo because this guy has a, a mask on. It was during an outbreak of SARS like a decade ago. You know, the only problem is he's got it on the upside down. So we never ask you to do something unless it's necessary, and it only works if you do it right. So you know, don't wear a mask unless you need it. If you don't do it right, it won't help you. So you know, if you're doing the right things for the right reason, do it the right way. That's a good rule to live by, isn't it? Yeah. Y'all are taking this seriously. <laughs> uh, so, how are you protected on the job? So, you know, these are some pretty nasty things. And you can remember that job at 7-Eleven in Dyer Street Road in such bad deal. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, standard precautions. You need to treat everybody as though they have an infection like HIV so that you always do the same thing every single time to protect yourself. And that's how we have employees, that's how we have 10,000 employees without them getting infected. That stuff. So uh, typically it is, you consider that everybody has HIV and you do the same basic precaution step every single time. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the components of this. Hand hygiene, using barriers, avoiding those nasty, dirty sharks. If you don't do anything right or remember anything, remember that hand hygiene really, really is important. Mama was right. You know, you have to wash your hands. Uh, it's the single most important thing you can do to protect yourself and your patients. And there's two ways you can do it. Uh, it's always appropriate to wash your hands. That you're never going to fail as far as patient care or your safety if you wash your hands. Uh, but we also have alcohol products that you, you can use probably about 90% of the time. And those are quicker and really, really effective. So, when should you wash your hands? When you're visibly sore, 
if your fingers stick together, alcohol is going to help. You have to wash the stuff off your hands. So your hands are visible to soil. Uh, when you leave isolation rooms and your uh, student coordinators will make sure you know when the patients are in isolation. Uh, before, you, before you eat, it's a good idea. After you go potty, it's a really good idea. <laughs> um, especially at my house, I have you know, two boys and even entering their bathroom was a risk all of its own. So, <laughs> so after you go potty, uh, you know, just common sense. Uh, other times, you can use an alcohol foam or alcohol gel, and we have those around everywhere. Every patient room, every procedure area, we have alcohol products everywhere. Uh, the important thing to remember about PM hygiene, I guess there's two, two, actually, th there's, I need to redo the slide. There's the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, says there's five moments for hand hygiene. And I'll, three of those I'll, I'll make a point about is before you have patient contact, after you're done with patient contact, and then if you may move from one site or one job on a patient to another. Like if you're doing wound care on a leg and then you move to give them medication, you should, have, you should do, clean your hands between those jobs. The really, really important thing is when you present to a patient, you walk into a room, ah, Mr. Ray, you're really old today. <laughs> but go to the alcohol dispenser, start cleaning your hands with the alcohol form before you put on gloves. And do it in front of the patient so that they will see you do it and know that you clean your hands. And then repeat that process when you do it. So, okay? So, the three big moments are before patient contact, before you put on gloves, during care, when we're changing sites, and then when you leave the room. Okay? Three times, three opportunities, at least. There's actually two more, I just can't remember what they are. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so let's get one. You don't want to skip anything else? <laughs> Does anybody know how to wash your hands? You do? Alright, come up here and show us. Yeah. You're that guy's wife, you come with me. We're going to be here all day if you don't bring up.
stay away from it. Have somebody get the debris because you'll get stuck trying to throw away a sharp. So just be cautious in throwing away a sharp and look at that box before you drop it in because it could be nasty like this. If you do have an exposure while you're working here or while you're in school taking care of patients, uh, contact your student coordinator. Uh, they will contact someone to help arrange for the source patient to be tested for those blood work pathogens. And if they're negative, life is good. <laughs> if not, uh, you may, your situation may require some prophylactic drugs. Do not wait. If you have a sharp injury Friday afternoon, don't wait till Monday. Tell your coordinator immediately. Even though you want to get out of town, you want to go do something, tell your coordinator. Um, for HIV exposures, including the time that you get stuck, you report it to the coordinator, we test the source patient, we want to deliver you drugs within four hours. That's your best chance of not catching HIV. So, don't wait. Don't panic because you know the numbers, right? Three out of a thousand. We've never had anybody here acquire HIV on the job. How long has HIV been with us? Don't remember? 1981, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so 1981. Yeah, long time. So, don't delay. Tell your coordinator immediately. I won't talk about that. Uh, for some patients, standard precaution is just isn't enough, and we have to add a isolation precaution. And I have some of these listed, and we're really not going to go into these. But just know that your coordinator will show you how to put on protective equipment, gowns and gloves, and how to take those off so you don't contaminate yourself when you're leaving the room. If you take off a pair of gloves incorrectly any time, you can contaminate yourself. So it's important to know how to do things and to do it right. Uh, let's get my So if you want to check and see if anything I told you is correct, it's actually in policy on employee net. If you, once you learn how to use the uh, intranet, which is called employee net, then the left side of the page, it has policies. Click on that, it says infection control. Click on the facility and it'll tell you the policy for infectious diseases and other stuff. So, anyway, so any questions? Okay, let's go through the post test. I gave you two handouts. One is kind of tip sheets for hand hygiene and also for um, just some general safety points on the other page. And then we have your test. You need to put probably your your name. I guess you're all freshman students, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, and you'll need to turn these in after you turn up. Okay. Uh, number one, uh, hand washing is required if hands are visible soil. Yes. Specific actions I can take to reduce infections. All the above. Three ways of being infected with blood more pathogens. Right. B, C, and D. Name of the uh, policy for all patient contacts. Data precautions. We do not identify HIV patients. We don't know who they are. Or help B or help C. Otherwise, you would do something different. You treat them all as though they have HIV. Everybody has HIV. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Conceptually, okay? <laughs> uh, use of sharp safety devices is all the above. Personal protective equipment is all the above. If you go to work someplace after you, assuming you graduate, <laughs> your, your manager, the person that you work for, doesn't have a choice of whether you wear your protective equipment. OSHA says that they have to mandate you wear it, period. Or you can file a complaint. So, how about that? Okay. Uh, the most important means of preventing infections in patients and healthcare workers is 
and honey, three blocks, blood more passages are. Here we get four sections of TV. Thank you. Thank you. 